I just finished the recording of my first podcast in quite a while. But to be honest, it doesn't feel like a podcast. It feels more like a big piece of my heart, an open window into my life. Well, the topic of relationship being the lens through which you're able to enter my world. Um, there's a lot going on relationship-wise in my life right now. And I felt a strong urge to share, to share what I'm going through, what I'm learning, what I'm feeling. Um, and yeah, if there are any bits and pieces that are of value to you, I'm happy. Um, but for me, just sharing is, is beautiful. I just finished the recording and it's like, the amount of joy and the amount of gratitude just to be able to do that is in immense. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to to give that away, my truth. I'm subscribing to the concept of gift economy. So there is no no sponsor, um, no no upsell to any overpriced coaching program. This podcast is not a marketing tool. Like every podcast out there you see is a marketing tool in order to bring people to another place. No, this is the place where I want to take you. Me sharing my truth and um, potentially broadening perspective and seeing seeding inspiration. So if something that happens here is of value to you and you feel the urge to support that, to contribute, to gift something, I I strongly appreciate that. You find the link in the in the show notes um but yeah this is a gift so without further introduction enjoy I just came back from an incredibly intense week two days ago i arrived back here my home the place where I enjoy being the most. Every day I'm coming here to sit next to the beautiful and sacred Ayung River, the biggest river in Bali. Um, and being surrounded by the most amazing trees, like sitting like under a canopy, being protected from the sun, and just immersing myself in this vibrant setting, in this place that gives me so much. This is my everyday ritual. I come here to reflect and to connect and just to be. Yeah. And as I was sitting, sitting here, Yesterday and the day before, I felt a strong urge to share what is going on in my life and what I'm learning right now and the journey that I'm having right now. And what was happening over the past week. And the past week is strongly interlinked with the last two days, uh, two years. The last two years, a little bit more than two years, I was in a romantic relationship with Elena. And before I came back here, I spent the whole week with her in order to transition into a different container of our relationship. We won't be in a romantic relationship anymore. We will transition to being good parents for Lionel and friends and allies on this journey of life. And as you can imagine, it's an intense process. And it was very challenging. And at the same time, I was able to, to witness how pure, unconditional love looks like and feels like. And that gave me a glimpse of how I want to live relationships in the future. And that's my intention for today, to share my journey to share my process and to enable you to just pick whatever resonates 
and adapt that for your settings, for your life. And maybe it will be of value. For me, what I went through feels really, really, really profound. <laughs> and at the same time, I have no ambition to teach anything or to spread the truth. I'm here to share my truth. Yeah. And this will this will take place under the under the the overarching topic of relationships, of romantic relationships. And I want to share with you my reflection and my reflections and my journey of going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and really trying to get to the essence of how does the how do I want to manifest my relationships in my life with the aim of getting closer and closer and closer to to the state of pure, unconditional love that I was able to witness over the past days, which makes me so grateful. And I believe, I believe this is a quality that we need more of in this, in this world. Yeah. So many relationships, and I, I noticed that in my life as well, so many relationships feel transaction-based feel like a deal okay i'm happy to give you x as long as i receive y from you and then we shake hands and we give each other what we are desiring and then we label that as a as a romantic relationship but actually i think what i was looking for over my whole life was this feeling of not not trading something not making a transaction but really seeing each other in their essence at their core two human beings encountering each other from this place of i don't need anything from you i just want to be with you and i let you free you are a sovereign hum human being you are here to go on your path in life and as long as I can, as I can, I can serve you in that, um, I will do that. And if that no longer is the occasion, I let you free. And I still love you. And because my love is not contingent on you giving me some kind of validation. Yeah. And yeah, I want to give you a quick backstory how everything unfolded the beginning of 2021 i was hosting a business coaching program and elena was a participant in that with the goal of growing her business and spreading her message and we had a good relationship in the in the program um but it was nothing more than a than a teacher and a student and and then over over the the topic of of community we really connected and we had a we had a private conversation and we shared um how we are how we are seeing our future how we want to live that we are both very fond of this idea to be like physically close to people who who you feel very connected with and to share this life together um, and we had a beautiful conversation about that and started texting more and more and we, we felt there's a there's a there's a chemistry and we both feel attracted to each other and then a little bit later at the time i was i was living in bali and at the, um, a little bit later i was flying back to to germany to host the final event of the coaching program I, I was I was hosting where Elena was a participant of and then she asked me oh I could I could come a, a couple of days earlier uh, so that we can we can connect um, before the event takes place and I said yes of course sure come and then she she came and she never left and from the first minute we saw each other like in person we were both all in 
we felt, yeah, we want to be with each other. And she moved in with me in Berlin and we explored our, our connection. And as I said, I was all in. She was all in after a couple of days. I think two days after, after we met. Um, it was my grandma's birthday, and I invited her and uh, and introduced her to my family and introduced my family to her. And this is this is how I how I was living relationships for my entire life. When I feel that something clicks and I want to be with that person. Um, I'm all in. There is no like, okay, let's date for a couple of months and and then let's see. And um, when I feel yes, then then I'm all in. And and the the theme of being all in was was really was really guiding us through the start of our relationship. Um, we we almost immediately put our businesses together. Um, at the time, I was starting Thrive, and she realized, oh, I actually want to want to bring forth the same into the world, and we we connected our our strength and our gifts and went for it together. And we were tr starting to build community. First, it was online and then temporary spaces and bringing people together. But this whole notion of community really intrigued us. And then after 46 days, um, after she, she arrived in Berlin, I proposed to her. I asked her if she wants to, wants to be my wife. And she said yes. And at this time, our minds didn't know, but maybe our bodies already felt that she was pregnant. And we had the... We held the, the positive pregnancy test in our hands. And for me, it's, it's clear, like my whole life, crystal clear that I want to be a dad. That th this is, this is an, a major part of my, of my identity. Being a father, this is like, I have a, I have a small brother, a younger brother, wh whom I love so much and we always had an amazing connection and she's he's he's six years uh younger than me and i think this gave me a little bit of a glimpse into how it is being a father um and that was that was crystal clear for me my entire life but for her it was the opposite she was she was sure that being a mom is is not her is not her path and she couldn't imagine being a mother because it felt like I need to give up all my desires, my mission, my my things that I want to want to create and manifest in this life and be like a full time mom. And, and then we had the test in our hands. We canceled everything that was planned for the for the upcoming days and went to a really, really intense process of asking ourselves big questions. What do we really value in life? How do we want to live? What is important for us? And how can we create a setting where everything is, is able to, to be together, where all the different aspects of, of, of the lives, of our imaginations can, can come together. And we realized that the missing link was the setting in which we were living at the time we were living in berlin had a beautiful apartment overlooking the river not as beautiful as here <laughs> but yeah for 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 me two and a half years ago it was like it was my dream home and there was a rooftop terrace and we were enjoying the the sunset and yeah it was it was amazing but this was when when we had the when we when we got the news that we will be parents that then this felt so off like going to the next playground after the after after like crossing the intense traffic and then arriving at the playground with our son and there are no other kids because they're staying at home and 
playing some video games and this just felt like so off. And we realized when we would be living in community with other families, with other parents, with other people who are really close to our hearts and with other children and the children can have each other and they can play together and they can be free and they are in nature and they can explore and we don't need to arrange any play dates two weeks in advance, but yeah, the children can can just be free. And at the same time, this frees up so much, so much energy and so much time for the parents because they can they can follow their their adult adult desires and goals and they don't need to be parents like 24 7 um and when we painted this image inside our heads elena made the decision to yes okay in this setting i can imagine myself to be a mother and we said yes we said yes to Lionel. Yeah. And then we immediately put the image in our heads into practice and we went to build a community. We did a huge crowdfunding, shared everything with our online community and said, let's let's build Thrive Villages. Are there any people out there with, with whom this idea resonates to build a community in nature with families and uh, with at the same time the business spirit and let's build something and let's 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 make an impact and so many people said like wow this is exactly what i what i want you are you are speaking out the the vision i have since 10 years and this feels so right and for us it was clear that the first community where our son will be born will will be in bali bali is our is our home is our favorite place um on this planet and then we were able to attract a couple of other crazy people who in a just a couple of months will be flying with us to Bali and start the community. And then 1st of December 2021, the Thrive Village in Bali opened. Just two and a half months short of Lionel's birth. So yeah, we manifested everything. We manifested it. And Lionel was was able to be born in a in a home birth in a beautiful loving setting with our midwife not in a hospital and then he, later he was welcomed by the community and everybody held the space for for him to be born i believe this is the greatest gift that we as parents can give to our children the arrival in this in this three-dimensional world plays such a huge role. And I can see that in him every day. The amount of like deep trust he has in himself and life. This is so beautiful to see. This is so, so beautiful to see. Um, yeah. Hmm. But to be honest, the the day to day life as a as a new family was not how I envisioned it to be. Still, there was this tension of it, of a uh, of a uh, like Elena being in resistance with her with her mother role, and I was I was stepping into this into this um, caring caring role a lot i was with leonel put him in the sling for six seven eight, uh, eight hours a day and walking with him and being with him and caring for him uh, because that, that felt natural to me that felt easy to me that felt exactly yeah i was i was anticipating being a father like for so much time okay wow i, I want to get it all in and at the same time i was i was giving a lot and i was i was losing losing my groundedness in the process as well and hmm. when I reflect back on this time and seeing how the next months unfolded and how it became more and more clear that Elena and I 
are moving in different directions. Immediately after we moved into the to the community, she realized actually this this doesn't feel right. This is not not my my purpose in life to bring this vision of community for Thrive is more like your baby. And she stepped out of Thrive. We were starting it together, but um, almost immediately after we after we uh, opened the community, she stepped stepped out of this like pioneer entrepreneur leader role of course she she still stayed in the community as a member but i was i was taking i was taking the lead um and thrive became just like my my baby and she focused more on her personal brand and spreading her truth her gifts her workshops coachings retreats and a part of me knew that this is this is the right decision because uh, it's not her journey. And another part of me was really sad because for me, one of the, one of the greatest fulfillments in life is being so close with another person in a union, in a romantic union, and then building things and creating spaces and putting our gifts together and spreading them this is this is what I what I was looking for like for in every relationship and I manifested some parts of that in relationships and in other parts um, not so much but there was still this deep deep yearning of being together and sharing like every part of our lives not like not separating in this is my business this is my family these are my friends but i i believe that for me personally the biggest fulfillment and the biggest feeling of everything is right takes place when all the areas of my life like merge into each other i don't want to separate yeah i cannot imagine being in a relationship where we both come home in the evening and yeah what was what was going on in your li in your day and what was going on in your day and we are sharing that and this feels like so no i don't want to i don't want that um and in this moment a part of a part of this this desire um was not mad and i think in this in this situation a little bit of a of a distance um um God between each between between us because it was not this like all in like sharing everything anymore and then a couple of months later Leona was growing up um, we were caring for him still living in the community we flew to Europe and um, left the Bali community in order to to visit the second community that we opened um where we didn't live like permanently but we wanted to visit in portugal and another um another couple of things took place in europe and then fast forward a couple of months even even later both our communities in bali and in portugal closed because um yeah they didn't they didn't turn out as as we hoped for um, and there were many like different challenges between between the community members between us as Thrive and the community members and we didn't create the ideal setting um, and a part of me asks this question whether in the moment when we arrived and Elena realized okay that's that's not my journey um, that in this moment it was already clear that it wouldn't it wouldn't turn out as we as we hoped for because we were both the leaders and everybody signed up for for us leading this movement and then um yeah but yeah there were many many different reasons um and this is not the space to to reflect on what it needs uh uh in order to make so community successful i want to share more about this topic in a future episode. But for this sharing, I want to put on the lens of relationships um, through which I'm gonna reflect on the past, past two years.
and this leads me to to one of my biggest learnings and my biggest growth invitations that my relationship with Elena gifted me because I believe we always get the the right relationship the exactly the relationship that we are in is the relationship that we need and becoming a dad and at the same time where even though you are communicating that this is not the role that you want to be in but at the same time since you are the initiator the leader um there is a certain kind of attention on you and um in order to lead the community um and there and having people there who are like okay robert so what's 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 going on um and this whole and and the relationship with elena and this whole setting felt like the my personal pressure cooker with so much with so much things going on in my life and uh, and on and, and, and so many so many levels me being needed that i lost my groundedness and i was over the past two years i was giving so much i was giving so so much on so many levels that's why one of my one of my strongest sensations right now inside my body is the feeling of exhaustion the feeling of oof, the past two years were so intense and you were giving so much and you didn't care for yourself in the way that is really needed and this is my this is my pattern um that i'm invited to to let go of this whole notion of committing to certain projects relationship people and out of excitement out of out of seeing potential and in, in in business like a lot people come to me and say like i want to do this and i'm like yeah let's do this together oh my god amazing and then i commit to to certain um certain projects and i don't have the the time for my for myself anymore because so many things are going on in my life and then i start sacrificing my routines my sleep my clean nutrition um my me time my rest my groundedness and then i start making bad decisions then i focus my energy and my attention onto certain things and lose track of what's really important and then i make things even worse and that i don't have the clarity to 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 really to really go in the right direction and the past two years were a really strong sign for me hey robert things are not working when you are not 100% connected with yourself grounded centered in your truth then things are just not working and i think this is one of the one of the main reasons why i i felt the attraction to elena because she's very very good at setting boundaries and communicating her needs and going for whatever she wants to um in life and everything that aligns with that beautiful and everything else just just let it be and this is one of the major gifts that i was able to receive from her this invitation of hey prioritize your needs first your groundedness first and then you can give but out of an empty cup you cannot serve others your cup needs to be full and then i know this is this is one of the basic like cliche quotes that you post on instagram but to really in on on the deepest cellular cellular level to integrate that that was my journey over the past years and the last two years was a really strong sign from the universe hey this is 
the number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number ten, priority. And then everything else. Yeah. And when I don't, when, when I'm not 100% connected with myself, then I tend to make more compromises than are healthy for me. And then I witness certain things that feel like, ah, oh, not so good, but there are so many things going on that I don't put the t attention onto this certain thing that's coming up and move my attention somewhere else. And then things are boiling here and there and um yeah because i don't have the because i don't have the space or i don't create the space for what's really going on and there is a there is a strong really strong part inside myself that's 100% in peace with everything that's happened and this feeling of surrender to the infinite wisdom of of life itself and knowing that everything is exactly perfect as it turned out this part is very strong and at the same time there's another part inside myself that says actually if you would be very honest to yourself in the beginning of the relationship with elena there were certain certain situations where you thought to yourself, actually, this feels wrong. This, this is not how I want to live a relationship. Even in the first, in the first weeks, there were certain, certain moments where I realized, oh, hmm, no, this feels, this feels, this feels wrong. And this, like for me, the, the foundation of every relationship is mutual respect and the assumption that everybody is that everybody is, is, is acting from highest intentions and this mutual love and understanding of, uh, oh, there's, there's something that's that, uh, maybe a conflict that we are having or something that I don't agree with, or, with you, uh, but I'm assuming that you are giving your best. Okay, let's talk about that. So this is always the attention. Uh, this is always the 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 approach um that comes natural for me when when there are some tensions um and for elena it was it was it was oftentimes more like a judgmental um and uh like okay when something is 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 off for her like really going into a fight and my my answer to this was okay I know her story and I know what made her act this way that feels that feels wrong for me like being like violent with words is for me like okay no that's that's not that's not that's not how I want to well, how I want to live a relationship, and I, I, that's that's not how I want anger to be processed. It's super welcome to be angry, um, but not in a way that's that's attacking the other person. Um, and my reaction to that was being very understanding of of her path and why she's reacting this way. And my response was, okay, I need to be more grounded and more centered and more like this mountain this rock that when she's reacting in a in a in a rude way i can just be like hey darling share with me what what deep down hurts you and i just need to work on myself and then she will be able to surrender um into my masculine presence and the the she will react in another in another way. That was the story I was telling myself, um, even though I felt okay. This is not the the way we we approach each other. Just doesn't feel like very mature and very 
and very and very loving. Yeah, I have I have no no problem with with conflict. I embrace conflict when there are some tensions going on, and we can lo learn and grow together. That's super welcomed. Um, yeah, but the the way these tensions get processed is very very important for me. So, um, so my reaction to that was always this: like, okay, I need to work on myself, and then the problems will 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 fade away. But if I would be very honest with myself, even in the beginning, there was this voice inside me, Robert. This this doesn't feel right. Um, but and this brings me to the to the next to the next big 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 learning that's yeah everything manifests in all areas of our life so it's not only about relationships but in the in my in the in the realm of re, of 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 relationship i'm witnessing certain things and i'm witnessing them in other areas of my life as well and i see the i see the pattern and i'm i'm invited to work on that yeah and this brings me to the to the next big 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 growth invitations and that is being in the moment in the here and now and not in the future and the story i was telling myself is okay if she works on these certain things and if this is taking place and if i'm growing into this man then our relationship will be perfect and um it will it will it will it will it will it will be in a way that it feels right for me but it was predicated on this notion of if this then and that meant that i was with a certain part of my attention always in the future because there was a resistance with the present with the present i was like okay if it's if it's like this if we encounter each other like this no no i don't want that but when in the future certain things happen, then. And I think that's very, 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 very. Not only toxic for the relationship, but very unfair to the other human being as well. Seeing them through this lens. And having the. Having the. Like the condition, the condition for our relationship being that certain things happen in the future. And if they don't happen, then there's a problem. Yeah. And I see this, I see this pattern repeating itself in in, in the way I was running running Thrive as well. So when we when we started the village, there were certain community members where uh, I we felt ah but they are very, very motivated and they are like, they want to make it work and they know that they have some, some inner work to do. Okay, let's, 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 let's make it happen. Um, and in the end, it was not a good decision. And I see this pattern repeating, repeating itself over and over again in certain, in, 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 in certain areas of my life, in all areas of my life. This invitation of, Robert, don't be in the future. Don't say, if this, then... But be in the be in the present moment. Be here. Be really here, and ask yourself: Do you want this? Yes or no? Does this feel right in the present moment? Yes or no? No matter how this relationship, this business project, this whatever, um, will evolve in the future. Be here. Be here in the present moment. And maybe if I would have embraced this attitude more. I would have made a lot of decisions differently. Yeah. And this realization gives me on one hand certain amount of sadness of like why did I why did I why did I sacrifice myself, my groundedness and therefore lost clarity? on what are the right decisions and committed to certain things that were not in my highest alignment. And on the other hand, 
it gives me it gives me a strong feeling of empowerment of everything begins with myself and how fortunate i am to be to 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 having been able to experience these these growth lessons um and that you're now in a in a in a in a setting that you went through all of that and you can build on that in the future and i don't want to i don't want to i don't i, I wouldn't change anything i feel like this strong perfection of everything and at the same time there are certain things that um in the future i will be doing differently um in future relationships in future business opportunities as well but let's stay with the with the with the lens of relationships for today and this always brings me back to myself prioritizing my basic needs prioritizing like and i maybe this is your invitation to ask yourself like how how connected you are to yourself to your needs how fulfilled are your basic needs a question that i that would be re really a wise decision to like have it have them tattooed here on my on my wrist and see it every day and ask myself this question like every day yeah because when that's the case everything is flowing in my life i make the right decisions i attract the right people everything is successful everything's beautiful i've i've had so many so many um times in my life where that was the case and shoo, everything was flowing and then there are other times where that's not the case when I'm sacrificing the essence. So that's the first major, 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 major point I want to hone in on for myself and maybe for you as well. And then the second one is be in the moment and don't make decisions based on a potential future development of the situation, the relationship, but just like be in the moment, be in the present moment. Um, because everything else is, we can. The older I get, the more I realize we cannot predict the future. We don't know what will happen. And when we make decisions in the here and now based on a certain outcome that we need in the future, this is a recipe for, for disaster. Yeah. Because even in relationships, then when we would be giving our love based on certain things that could come in the future or certain development of our partner and that doesn't take place, of course, that's we are feeling bad and um, maybe we try to make the other person guilty because, but they didn't sign up for, for any deal. They were just like, in the moment, it's our, it's, it's, I know, I know that 100%, it's my, it's my, it's my journey. Um, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. This feels liberating. This feels very, very, very liberating. I want to share with you how the past week unfolded and how this clarity that I'm sitting with right now came into my life and what that meant what that means for the future um for my future journey with Elena and for me personally and for my relationships and I want to dive a little bit into that because there are some more nuggets that are were really valuable for myself so I think since the beginning of this year, since the beginning of 2023, after the community ended, we moved out. Um, we're looking for a place to stay at, rented an Airbnb, just the three of us, Elena, Leona and I. We're living as a family, sending Leona in the afternoon to some daycare, kindergarten. And we were living like the ordinary life. And a strong voice inside myself told me, this feels wrong this feels really 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 wrong of course not everything in the 
and the Thrive Villages was perfect, but I really enjoyed community. I really enjoyed living this way and I really enjoyed living in nature. Um, we were living in a beautiful place far away from all the hustle and bustle in Bali. And now, beginning of this year, we were living in the south of Bali in Uluwatu. A lot of surfer vibes and spa and co-working and fancy restaurants. And um, every day I was the morning spending time with Lionel and then we were giving him to the to the daycare and then I went to a cafe or co-working and working on some things in the evening we had dinner together went to bed and this life for me felt off and I had a strong calling to nature and I realized that all this traffic and being on the scooter and no, this is not what I want to, what I want for Lionel, and this is not what I want for myself. I want to live in a setting that is that where I can be barefoot all the time, where I can be naked most of the day, um, and where I'm out outdoors and grow my own food, and Lionel being able to just like play and climb and explore. Yeah. And I felt that the way we were living at the moment is just not for myself. And Elena was Elena was actually happy with that. She was like, yeah, I want to live here. She started to to build a big house um, that will be finished by the end of this year. Like a couple of couple of years ago, it would be my dream home over like with a nice view. You see the ocean, multiple bedrooms, private sauna and many, many other things that are like, wow, this is that's an amazing home. But for me, actually, I I had a strong, strong calling for minimalism. And I just wanted to have a, a small hut in the jungle where I can grow my own food. It's built sustainably out of bamboo. Um, this is what I was what I was desiring. And then actually this home found me. This found me. It was being built at the time and I could share all my all my wishes, all my desires because I was the first person moving in. I'm not the owner of the house. Um, I'm renting it. But yeah, I found my dream home and it's two minutes from here. And every day this is my this is my spot here on the river. I I I love it so much when I'm here with Lionel and how she he's playing and climbing and exploring and He's a totally different child compared to when he's indoors. When he's indoors, he's like, oh, I need something. And, uh, and here he's so relaxed. And every time I'm here with him, I feel this is, this is, this is the place that, is, that, he, that he really needs. Um, and I have to, my, mind, my mind tells me, like, this is what every child needs. Yeah. And then this home found me. And as I dove in more into that, and both Elena and I felt actually our our lifestyle that we want to live differs a lot from 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 the lifestyle of the other. And we both made the decision to to live in, in separate places. She staying in the south of south of Bali in Uluwatu, me moving more to the north here into the sixteen square meters bamboo bamboo hut. And yeah, it was unsure how we will how we will organize everything with Lionel, and um, of course that was very challenging. And it was another step in the direction of not all the areas of my life are shared with with my partner. The dynamic I mentioned earlier when we separated and thrive, and that brought more more distance to, uh, between the two of us. And at the same time living a compromise for me living with her in Uluwatu I did that for three four months in the beginning of this year and I was just like sick of it and for her moving here um, in the beginning was not an option um, later this option came to the table and she said okay for me the most important thing is to to just live together and find a place um, that that feels right, and at the time I already already committed to the to the bamboo hut, and it's 16 square meters. It's only one room. We cannot live here together. Then, um, and uh, we talked about the option of finding another place. It was not able. It was not possible to find another place. Um, 
that was really like grounded in nature and then the opportunity arose to build on the on the neighboring property as well um but yeah then in the last 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 minute elena decided not not to do that um which i can totally understand i believe I believe it would not be healthy for her to make this strong of a compromise to live in a setting where she doesn't want to live from her heart and um, just that the three of us could be together. I believe, Even for Leona, I believe the, the most important thing for a child is to have two, two parents who are connected with themselves, who are living the lives that they really desire and out of that have the capacity to care for him um, and to be a role model for him. So... Yeah, we parted parted ways and that, and then we flew we flew to we flew to Europe because Elena was hosting two retreats, and I said, okay, I'm coming with you to care for Lionel so that you don't need to um, be separate from Lionel for 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 many weeks, um, and then we we arrived in Germany. We stayed in Düsseldorf in a in a hotel directly on the central station, and it was the most <laughs> the, like the harshest possible contrast to how we were living before in Bali and I was I was I was visiting my my future bamboo home that that will be uh, that that was built at this time and I'm spending time here on the river and it was like ah oh. and then we were arriving in Germany big city and um I was I was going for a walk with Lionel put him in the stroller and walking with him um, on the street and actually like putting him in the stroller, I have strong resistance to that. I, I think it's 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 absolutely not a good place for him. He doesn't like it. Um, yeah. And then we were walking around and I had so much resistance. Why did I even come here? I don't want to live this way. It feels so wrong. It feels so wrong for me. It feels so wrong for Lionel. And uh, while, we had, while we were doing that, Elena was... was uh, was on a shopping trip and um, spending extraordinary amounts on a on a on a on a hand on two handbags, and then in the evening she came back and proudly presented, "Hey, I bought this." And uh, I was like, "Okay, it's, it feels so so senseless being here." And we were in completely completely different worlds, different universes. And I was we were talking with each other, and I was like, "Okay." This feels so, 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 so far away. Yeah. And I think this was the next, this was the next moment where, where the separation was, was getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, yeah. And I, I'm not saying this um, in order to, in order to, uh, support the message or to make the claim of something that she's doing is wrong i 100 percent believe that what she's doing is actually completely perfect completely perfect i don't want to change her i don't want to judge her what she's doing is 100 percent perfect for her she's following her desires she's following what her what, what fulfills her and that's That, for me, is the recipe for life. Charles Eisenstein calls that the pleasure principle. Like following your pleasure, whatever excites you here in the moment, following that. And even if that means spending extraordinary amounts of money for a handbag, where I think, oh, you could build, a, you could build an entire bamboo hut out of that, uh, uh, out of that money. Um, but yeah, that's how I would spend the money. She's spending it differently, and when 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 her body tells her to get the handbag because there is a there is a craving, she wants that. It's perfect because when you follow this um, this this desire, then the real desire shows itself. I have so many situations in my in my journey where I actually needed to needed to complete a work project and there was a lot going on on my to-do list and then I felt the desire to boy actually pff, I just want to I want, just want to uh, 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 watch something on Netflix but this part inside myself of like you need to be productive was really loud and 
But I feel like, oh, actually, no, I, I want a break. I want to watch something on Netflix. And I did, I did that. And in the, in, the, um, in the movie I was watching, there was, a, there was, an, there was an, an, an essential truth for me that enabled me to see what I was working on completely in a different light and realize this is not important. I need to do this instead. And that's why watching Netflix was the was the most productive thing I could do in the moment because it it broadened my perspective and and I think this is the magic of of life that unfolds when we are following what excites us in the moment um and even if I like after two hours of watching Netflix realized I don't want to do this anymore um then the real desire um shows itself so I believe everything she's doing is completely perfect. And at the same time, I realized it's not a match. It's not a match for where I'm at right now, for my values, for how I want to I want to go through life. Um and then we had a we had a we had a conversation for her podcast um back in April, two and a half months ago. Um where we talked about where we are at with our relationship right now, and she asked me, Hey, I've so we are in so many in, in completely different universes so let's just say our relationship has ended and in this moment and that was really interesting because i want to share this i think there's a lot there's a lot in it um at this moment there still was my 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 optimist oh maybe in the future when i will move in into my bamboo hut and she will she will be an uluwatu and she will realize oh that's not what i want and then she will visit me and then she's like oh yeah let's live here together exciting and, and um there was still this optimist storytelling uh, narrative inside myself that's saying oh maybe maybe there will be and then da, 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 da. and at the same time and i, I still subscribe to that and at the same time, I felt a strong resistance into labeling our, our relationship. And this leads me to a topic that, um, that really intrigues me. Like questioning how, how, we, how we perceive the people in our lives, how we perceive our partners, how we perceive our children, how we perceive our friends, even in our language saying, this is my partner my boyfriend, my wife, my child, there is a, there is the, the underlying assumption that this is some kind of property to me. Because when it's my partner, it can't be someone else's partner. It's mine. And I believe this is, this is at the core of, of the separation we are seeing in the world yeah this desire for owning certain things in order to feel security because when it's not my partner then it's a sovereign individual and he or she could do whatever he likes to and maybe he or she will decide to not be with me anymore and that's scary in my Oh, that's beautiful. Look what just arrived. Um, even in my past relationships, I was exploring alternative relationship um, models. I was exploring open relationships. And I was really, um, with one of my ex-partners, we were really intrigued by this, by this, by this deep, deep personal growth that arises when you when you don't see the other partner as property and the other partner is, is able to do whatever he or she likes. And even if that means, oh, actually, I, I, I met somebody and uh, I found that person really attractive and I want to meet him or her today in the evening. And then checking in with yourself, okay, like how I'm feeling. So what is coming up? Am I being jealous? Am I being sad? Am I being angry? Whatever is coming up, and we were really, really intrigued by the individual growth journey that this kind of more open relationship container invited. And yeah, I think this set me on the journey of 
questioning questioning this property approach when it comes to relationships we you can you can you can see that in all areas of our lives even the way most entrepreneurs run their business it's my business i incorporated the business and every revenue the business is creating is mine it feels so wrong everything that i'm doing with thrive i want to be of service i want to help manifesting um i want to help thrive manifest its purpose in the world and not dictate whatever what what thrive needs to be and to enrich myself <laughs> yeah so I had a resistance of putting a label onto our relationship um, because it felt like, no, like how we are encountering each other that will change over the course of our lives. So for the past, we were in this romantic container together and right now we are both feeling actually there's a strong separation and we don't feel we don't feel called to be in a in a romantic relationship with each other but that's for now we feel that now maybe that will change in the future um maybe in a certain uh, certain time in the future we will just be friends and not in this romantic container and then maybe after that we will be in a romantic container again and i think when two human beings meet each other and they are really connected with themselves and they are following their desires in the here and now, the nature of the relationship is fluid and will change over time. And will be sometimes it will be closer, sometimes it will be more distant and then it will be closer again and then it will be super focused on, on creating something together and then uh, this project ends and then the relationship is more focused on exploring with the other. And um, I'm really questioning right now how we how we see relationships and the, the stagnant nature of, okay, this is, we marry and then this is my partner and for the rest of our lives we will be in exactly this manifestation of our relationships together. I'm really questioning that right now. And this leads me to the question, what is the, actually the purpose of relationships? What is the purpose of relationships? And the answer that's really alive in me right now is, Every relationship is an invitation to discover more of yourself. Parts of yourself that you are currently not in contact with, through the other, through the mirror, through the trigger, you are getting in contact with. And that's it. Your relationship is not there to make you happy or to give you security or whatever. A relationship is there in order to discover more of yourself. And when I reflect back on the past two years, I was able through Elena to discover me in a totally different way and to really to really hone in on my groundedness and be able to set boundaries when people, projects, whatever, um, are not in alignment with 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 my personal needs. I was able to to heal i was able to grow up i was able to mature and that's that's amazing and that's i'm incredibly grateful for that and when i when i when i compare her where she's at right now um compared to when we started our relationship she was able to discover so many parts um in herself through through me and through our relationship and and that's why i'm immensely grateful for for the romantic relationship we share together, even though this is shifting right now. So we had the podcast conversation and I said, I don't want to put a label on it. Um, and I don't know how our relationship man will manifest in the future, but for now I I totally agree with you that we don't feel called to to be in a romantic space together. I'm moving to my to my space. You are living in your space. Okay, let's see how everything will unfold. Um, and this was a standpoint um, where where I was at in April, and then um, that felt good and clear for me. And then I was fortunate enough to to meet a woman, and through her, 
and it leads us back to the purpose of a relationship is to discover more of yourself through the other through our connection that is only unfolding right now we are still getting to know each other um, we're still in the process of figuring out how our connection could unfold in the future and at the same time being in the here and now being in the moment um, and not trying to predict not trying to create anything in months or years um, from now but really being in the now and through her and through being with her and witnessing how we how we encounter each other how we how we are with each other through that i was able to see more and more clearly what doesn't feel right in the relationship with elena and through our connection i was able to really be 100% clear okay being this close and this romantic container this is over and and this is not contingent of whatever will unfold for me with uh, with this beautiful woman that entered my life even if she would tell me hey robert um um i don't want to be with you anymore um i don't see a future for us even if she were telling she would tell me that that wouldn't be a oh maybe then i will try with elena no 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 through us sharing space together which was not a lot yet i was fortunate enough to to receive the gift of really realizing how i want to live a relationship and and that's why um a little bit over a week ago um i i drove down to to ulovato to elena and i shared that with her the clarity that i'm that i'm having right now and i i i told her about the other woman as well um and this started our very 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 intense week long process for which i'm immensely grateful and at the same time it was very challenging because when i when i first shared everything with her of course she was hurt she was really hurt she she felt like abandoned and that i was sacrificing our our connection and our family and it was really close to her saying please leave the house this is too painful for me i don't want to i don't want to feel this please leave the house please go it was really close to this happening and we then we were arguing and she was she was she was blaming and i was like explaining and it was it was not leading to to a very very productive conversation and then there was this mo one moment and in this one moment everything shifted and i have a, i have an immense respect and appreciation for elena for behaving in this manner because we were like battling back and forth and um and then there was this one moment where where she said or she asked some questions about um the woman that entered my life and she was asking a couple of questions oh who is she and what is she doing and what is she up to and i was sharing a little bit and then she said oh wow this sounds this sounds like a very good fit and i'm happy for you that you have made this this connection and in this moment like everything came out we were like both crying together and i was so i felt so seen i felt so appreciated i felt so so connected
and we just shared the most beautiful space together like crying together holding each other of course i was seeing her pain as well that uh, that they led her to to reacting the way re he re she reacted in the past of course i saw everything that deep down in her heart she's she's longing for this for family for just like yeah and yeah i was seeing her and she was able to 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 feel her emotions as well that were bottled up for quite a while and the same for me and and in this moment i said to her i said to her the most beautiful gift that i'm receiving right now is this feeling of although there are certain things like um that are between each other and I may be the source of your pain right now. And the greatest gift that I'm receiving right now is you letting me hold you in this container and be there for you and not say, leave, this is too painful, I need to escape. But, you, but seeing Elena really being there and me being able to support that This was, this was so beautiful. This was so beautiful. And this is how I want to, how I want to live a relationship in, in the future. This is, this is new story relationship for me. This is unconditional love. This is, I know that there is a certain part inside myself that's really hurt right now, but at the same time, I value you as a human being and I let us, be on this journey of transitioning our relationship together and and I was staying with her for for a week we were like really close we we're sleeping in, in one bed and it was an up and down and up and down and up and down but sharing this journey together was was the greatest gift and the foundation for everything that out of our connection wants to unfold in the future and of course, this she reacting this way, this requires a lot of courage, a lot of setting the ego <laughs> to the side and really being, this requires a high level of maturity. And I have immense respect and appreciation for her that she reacted this way. And in this moment, I said to her, you know what, I feel so connected to you as I haven't, feel, I haven't felt since many, many, many months. And I finally feel that I have you back in my life, that we, our connection from human to human, not like are we in a romantic relationship, parents, whatever, but like human to human, Robert and Elena, this is back. This is really back. And she she said, I, actually, I, f I totally feel the same. And before that, as we were fighting, I literally had the, had the, the fear of, okay, maybe, maybe she will stay in her, in her pain and maybe we, she will blame that onto me and she will close herself off and push me away and maybe that's it maybe yeah we we will go separate ways in this in this in this life and of course communicate a little bit over Lionel but besides that everybody's doing his thing because this is the this is the story that that my parents um wrote my parents got divorced when i was 2 years old and of course, both were loving me deeply and I was loving both deeply. And But the two of them together after the divorce, there was no, there was no, no reconnection, no talking. And it was always like my mom was bringing me to him and they were avoiding each other. And 
has made me really sorry, really, 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 really sad. Yeah. Because I'm always thinking, like, when at a certain certain point in your life you would had such a deep connection that you that you will actually manifest a child, then there sh should always be a way to get get rid of all the all the stuff in between and process all the emotions and process the sadness and the grief and the anger and whatever and then to support each other as allies on this path. I really believe that. I really believe that. And it made me so grateful to witness that actually this is possible for Elena and me. Yeah. And then a couple of, as I said, it was up and down a couple of days later. Um, she, there was, an, there was an immense amount of anger that was coming up and me ble blaming for ending the relationship and she uh, and her saying that I'm just like transitioning into the next relationship and she got substituted and then she was sharing that on, on social media as well. And I was like really, 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 really upset uh, of her like blaming me like publicly and telling uh, and and talking badly about about uh about the the other woman um and then we had a we had an intense fight and and then i don't want to go into into like drama details but we were both not acting out of our out of our highest self and we were both saying like really mean really hurtful things she said something to me which which led me to lose my temper as well and say something to her that her that that was really hurtful for her and that was just just this 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 conversation was just like really fucked um but then the the storm calmed and i i said to her actually i feel very sorry for what i said and she said I feel very sorry for for what I said and I'm actually really grateful that you are in my life and then we reconnected and focused on on the essence and I think in a situation like this this is totally normal that it's such an up and down but there again was a moment where I felt like we are we are in such different worlds and maybe there's no bridge in between but then there was a bridge and there was a bridge and this led us to closer again even closer yeah this is how I want to live a relationship in the future approach each other with this assumption of you are perfect I don't need anything from you I don't want to change you you are perfect as you are and I want to share a space with you and if you want the same let's do that in the moment in the here and now and let's practice unconditional love and when something happens when the other when the other person is saying oh actually I think that I need something else in my life that I need to move to another place or I don't want to be with you anymore we we don't stop loving the other person because it's not it's not contingent on them on them doing something like our love is not contingent on the other partner behaving in a certain way it's just like for me my highest priority is that you are fulfilling your potential and that you are going your journey in life and if i can support that beautiful and if that stops being the case beautiful as well i'll still love you i feel the profoundness and the deep healing this could bring into the world and that's why it's so important for me to to share our journey because i think it's not it's not about our journey it's about it's about a certain kind of kind of energy field that we were able to tap into and it required a lot of work from us <laughs> it is not easy it's not it's not it's not easy it's it's really challenging but it begins with 
ownership, ownership for your own feelings. It begins with putting the ego aside and really seeing the other, encountering the other. And there were so many situations where we were not aligned and we were fighting. And it would be so easy that this stays like it is and everybody goes their, goes their ways. And then it could, it could be so easy that this stays the same. But then either Elena or me, one of us approached the other and said, actually, I feel sorry. Actually, I don't want this. Actually, I miss you. Actually, I'm sad what's happening right now. And when one of us opened up, the other one opened up as well. And then we reconnected. This is one of my, one of my most profound learnings. When the going gets really tough, don't be in your ego and say like, but the other person said this and this and this and this and this. And no, they need to apologize first. When we want to live in the new story relationship, it's ownership and we make the move. Yeah, we make the move. And at the same time, we are, we, 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 we are really careful on in which relationship settings do we, do we want to, do we want to live like. And all this, like all this immensely beautiful journey over the past seven days that unfolded, where we reconnected, didn't let me to a place where I said, yes, yes, now I want to be in a romantic relationship with you anymore. No, that's clear. That's clear that this is not a container. But in other containers, I'm looking forward to be allies on our journey in life together. Be amazing parents and be amazing friends and be amazing supporters. And continue seeing parts of yourself through the other. That doesn't need to stop even though the, the, the romantic container stopped. But this requires a, a clear, clear ground and all the garbage of the past being sorted out. And now we can, we can, we can encounter each other from, from a neutral space, from a really neutral space. And I believe the gifts that we are able to receive from the other will be even greater than what has already happened. And that makes me intensely grateful. Even though I have no, I have no, no desire to try to predict the future. Maybe in the future we will have like crazy fights again. And then we will, we will really be separate for a while. And then maybe we will reconnect, maybe we will not reconnect. But I'm in peace with that. I'm in peace with me being in the moment and being as open and as loving and at the same time as caring for myself as I can be. And then I let the chips fall. I let them fall. I let them fall in my relationship with Adina, in my other relationship that is, that is starting to get, to become explored. Um, there is no attachment. There is no attachment. There is no like, I will only love you when no. And that begins with a deep love for yourself. Over the past 10, 15 years, I was on my self-love journey. And when I was 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, it was really uncomfortable to just be with myself. Friday night, all the friends going out and me sitting at home, I felt like a loser. And now I enjoy spending time with myself so much and it feels like the, it feels like the greatest luxury to have an evening with myself. No Lionel, no Elena, no other people, no work, no business, no whatever. Just like be with myself, read a good book, prepare, prepare, prepare my own food and eat my um, incredibly delicious salad bowl and... Uh, and go to bed early. This is like the greatest luxury. And yet it begins with that. When we are not able to approach ourselves with, 
with unconditional love, we are not able to approach other people with unconditional love. And this begins with accepting and being at peace with everything we did in the past. Even like I shared with you that I regret, I regret making a, making a movie and including Lionel's birth and having having filmed that and letting, of course, two beautiful human beings, amazing filmmakers, Nick and Celine, and they were very very careful and very tender, and they did an amazing job. And at the same time, this was not the space for them. And even though I regret that, I don't, I don't hit myself for having done that in the face every day. I'm like, okay, I did my best and I made this decision. Um, and it actually doesn't feel right anymore. But yeah, I did that and I'm in peace with that. Mm. And this whole, and I, I know why I, why, I, why we made the decision to to share his birth because we were still subscribing to this hype mentality and this I shared about that earlier this hype mentality was the reason why we were able to manifest two Thrive Villages and the cinema movie and everything in such a short time period because a part of me was still in this hype mentality that was really strong three, four, five years ago and then I met Elena and she's she's in this mentality as well she's probably the queen of hype when she's launching something it's like and everybody's talking about that and we multiplied each other and then yeah we flew higher and higher and higher and higher and we thought like okay yeah and we can reach so many people and uh this is such an such an incredible moment to see a child being born at home and that it can change the world but yeah changing the world is not is not the, the main purpose. It's not even the purpose. I'm letting go of this whole notion of trying to change something. I'm not trying to change anything. I'm just being in contact with my gifts and sharing them because I feel like doing that is actually the greatest fulfillment and then when change results, that's fine, that's beautiful. But that's not the goal. Same here with the podcast. For me, the most important thing is to be able to share my journey and to have this, of course, it's not a conversation. It's a one-sided conversation. I'm looking forward to continue to a real conversation in the future. But the purpose for me is that we put all these topics on the table and then whatever results from that in your personal life and in your relationship life, I let the chips fall. That's, that's, that's up to you. Maybe it's a time for radical changes. Maybe not. Maybe something will change in the future. Maybe not. Maybe you will go out of, of this podcast saying, okay, that was not, not a nice story. Um, and that's fine for me as well. And maybe you go out of this podcast and say, like, this changed my life. And that's fine for me as well. But that's, that's not the, the main goal. And this always brings us back to, the, to, to one of the core learnings I shared in the beginning. Be in the moment, not in the future. My work, my relationship, everything that I'm doing is not there to to fulfill any any future um, expectation or to make anything happen in the future. No, everything is there to be lived in the here and now. In the here and now. And when we are in peace with the here and now, then this automatically leads to a beautiful future, I believe. I witnessed that in my, in my life in so many occasions. When I'm at peace with the here and now, great things happen in the future but when I'm in the future with my attention I sacrifice the past the future won't be great and uh, it's a lose-lose being in the here and now is a win-win for the here and now and for the future uh, yeah there were some very very important growth invitations that I was able to receive over the past two years and I'm immensely grateful for for be, for encountering Elena and for her being in my life and for her gifting me all this all these opportunities to discover more of myself and to discover where I'm in alignment with myself and where where I'm not in alignment with myself and I feel really humbled 
I feel really humbled by what I was able to to take in, by what, by what I was able to integrate, and at the same time, yeah, just in awe of the about the incredible genius of the universe of life itself about the story that's being that's being written right now not by me i don't feel like the writer of the story i'm just trying to surrender into the process and let the story be written through me and i feel that the more the more i get out of the way the more i don't the more i i stop trying to predict the future, trying to, trying to be in control, trying to make anything happen, the more beautiful the, the story will be. Yeah. And the, the easier my life will be. Yes. Hmm. All right, let's do a quick wrap up. And there is a part inside myself that's telling me, mm, no, a wrap up is wrong because because I don't want to I don't want to convey any particular message and when I would be sharing my three four five main takeaways maybe for you something else was 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 the main nugget and the things that I'm sharing are not resonating with you that could be and with that being said I will share my main nuggets but it's very important um, for me to stress that whatever you take out of this podcast is perfect and I don't want to teach. I don't want to teach any particular message. Maybe you need a totally opposite message right now. That's totally fine. Um, but yeah, for me, what I want to really hone in on and cons like protect and conserve for me personally and my upcoming journey is making the, the groundedness and the connection with myself the number one priority being in the moment and not entering a relationship, a business project, whatever, from this perspective of certain things could emerge in the future, a certain potential could be could be realized and then stop doing that. Really stop doing that. And this automatically lets this whole hype attitude melt away and we are just in the moment and we are communicating our needs and this leads me to the to the next takeaway open and honest conversation in every situation even if you screwed this up for many 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 months now is the invitation to communicate really openly really honestly and it's always possible to repair and to heal yeah take full ownership over your relationships and when you are not happy with something you always have the the potential to to address that and to say to your partner hey there's something that i want to share with you yeah and next takeaways seeing every relationship as an opportunity to discover more of myself not only rom romantic relationships every relationship every friendship every like every aunt that's triggering me or every grandpa that's saying something mean everything is a is an opportunity to to invite more uh, to invite more clarity and more connection with my full being yeah just perfection what really stays in the end is this feeling of perfection It's perfect as everything unfolded. It's perfect that I lost myself in the process. It's perfect that I'm now able to reconnect with myself in the process. It's perfect what got triggered in me. It's perfect what got triggered in Elena. Um, we both, we both are taking so much out of our shared time for our future relationships. I will show up as a transformed man in my future relationships and she will show up as a transformed woman in, in her future relationships and 
being on this journey together and then when um a couple of days ago she asked me how i would feel if there would be another man in her life and then he will be he will spend time with her and Lionel will be with them at the moment and they will doing things like the three of them together and actually from the bottom of my heart i feel yes how beautiful is that if there is somebody go all in on that and if Lionel likes him wonderful wonderful spend time together i i have no fear of losing our family setting or whatever for me the the most important goal is that Lionel has many 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 people in his life that love him dearly and with whom he has a strong relationship and if that's Elena's new partner or if that's my new partner or if that's some stranger that we meet on the street and we realize oh there's a strong connection and then we spend a lot of time and Lionel saying this is like uncle Madi wonderful wonderful this is the goal this is the goal sharing love really sharing love and not separating and not closing off yeah hmm let's close the space thank you for your time thank you for your attention thank you for being there thank you for receiving what i needed to say and whatever is of value for you pick it try it do experiments don't take anything for granted that i'm saying really take it as an invitation to to reflect on your journey on your relationships yeah hmm yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you this actually for me feels this is like my sacred work this is like i'm sitting here on the river sharing my journey sharing my journey really really like putting everything out there i could do that every day and maybe i will do that every day maybe this will be the last podcast of that kind i don't know i'm not here to predict the future um yeah and if that was of value to you and you feel the you feel the calling to contribute to me doing this work and to spreading spreading my truth with the with the hope of um bringing value to people if you feel the, the urge to contribute um i receive everything with with immense gratitude and yeah knowing that all of this won't be possible with without all the people out there um so yeah thank you from the bottom of my heart that this can be my work and thank you for for your support and for you being there i really appreciate that and i'm sending you all the perfection and love and vibrant energy that is around here in this space directly to where you are right now cheers from bali talk to you soon bye bye